Well, 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 it's Saturday the 28th of September, and this is episode 2425 of 301 Permanently Moved to Online, a personal podcast 301 seconds in length, written, recorded, and edited by me at the JMO. I'm sorry, I've made some slop, but in my defence, it's because I really wanted to be a guest on my newest favourite podcast, Notebook, LM, from Google. I'll be back in the flesh next week. Everything that follows was created by AI tools. Ever feel like uh, you're like jumping between different realities, like all day long? Mm -hmm. Today we're diving deep into these different worlds. Okay. And we got uh, Jay Springett's work to guide us. Thanks for having me. Cool. He's got some really fascinating ideas. Yeah, I think about worlds a lot, not just in the sense of fiction or games, but as a framework for how we exist across different environments, techno-social systems. We're constantly shifting between them. What I find so interesting, especially in world running, is how you take this idea of worlds beyond just like games or fiction. Absolutely. Worlds aren't just metaphorical. The environments we operate in, whether it's digital spaces, the workplace, have their own internal logics, their own boundaries. They're all worlds. Got it. So let's unpack this a little. Yeah. Right. Where should we even start? Like, how do we wrap our heads around these worlds? Well, I often compare defining worlds to defining games. We all intuitively understand what a game is, but you can't necessarily give a perfect definition of what a game is when you take a step back. Worlds are kind of similar. Okay, so we can feel it. But it's hard to put into words. Mm. Right. But there are some things that both games and worlds share. Both a game and a world has a boundary and is internally consistent. So they have an inside and an outside. You're either playing a game or you're not. And whilst you're playing the game, the world has to kind of make sense. It needs rules of some kind. Mm -hmm. So like... In a fantasy world, magic might be real, sure, but it works within a consistent set of like principles. Yeah. And those rules might be totally different from our world. Right. But inside that world, they make sense. Yeah, and that's key. If the internal consistency breaks down, so does the world. It's like when you watch a movie and a character suddenly breaks the fourth wall. These are the edges of the world where one reality transitions to another. In our daily lives, a simple boundary can be closing your laptop after spending hours online. That moment feels like stepping through a portal back into your offline life. Yeah, and those transitions, they can be jarring. Yeah. Our brains get so used to the rules of a particular world that right. switching gears can be tough. It can be. Even if it's just going from one room to another. Right, yet we do it all the time. Move from one world to another. The thing that we need to remember is that this is all completely new. It wasn't until Dungeons and Dragons came out in the 1970s that we could even experience stepping into a simulated world you inhabited a character and you could see it through their eyes. It was a really big shift. Ah, uh, so that shift from observer to participant. Exactly. You weren't just watching a story, you were in it, making choices. You're in the story. And that shift, it's had a huge impact on yeah. how we engage with technology now, especially in digital spaces. Right. We create online personas. Yeah. We're navigating these virtual landscapes yeah, and yeah. making connections yeah. in ways that blur the lines between real and digital. And that's where my concept of worldviews comes in. You adopt different perspectives depending on the environment you're in. So like what you post on LinkedIn is going to be way different than what you share on like a Discord server for your favorite band. You have to understand those subtle differences. It's like learning a new language almost. It's exactly. Or a new dance even. Exactly. Each world has its own rhythm, its own culture, and to really engage, you have to understand those subtleties. You have to adopt the world's worldview. And this is where it gets even more interesting. Okay. Because Jay doesn't stop at the rules of these worlds. No. Right. He's interested in the stories we tell. Yes. The way for it. it the lore. The lore, yes. That emerges as we interact. That organic, always evolving narrative that comes from people interacting within a system. Yeah. Lore emerges from the inside. It's shaped by everyone who participates. It's the stories you tell about the world, and that applies to workplaces too. The culture of a company, for instance. That collective memory mm -hmm. that makes a world really come alive. It's like those, what do they call them, water cooler stories? Yes. That everyone at a company knows. Right. They're not written down anywhere. Right. But they still have a huge impact on like how people act and interact. It's like an unwritten rule book. Yeah, pretty much. What worlds do you want to help build? Ooh. Well, we're all world builders, whether we realize it or not. What kind of lore are you putting out? That's the beauty of it, right? Yeah. You get to choose. You choose your world. You choose how deep you go. You I'm... choose the impact you make. It's about remembering that you have agency. You're not just along for the ride. No, you're the architect of your own experience. 
You are the architect of your own experience. Well. And that is incredibly empowering. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. Until next time. Be well.